Hi all, Craig and Latte here. It's that time again where I bring you my tips, facts, or experience that you may or may not find helpful. Regardless of your opinion on the expansion as a whole, Shadowlands has an intense amount of collectibles. Transmog, mounts, pets, and much more that come in a variety of epic styles. The main thing you'll notice once you begin collecting is that a large portion of these are connected to the Four Covenants. These are the main hub-like feature of the expansion, so it makes sense. And what's more, the Covenants will require a lot of anima from you to unlock more content through the Covenant Sanctums and then to buy collectibles from their vendors. So, for collectors like me, this means we need to knuckle down and farm up an egregious amount of anima in order to unlock and buy everything. Especially if we want to do this on multiple characters to buy all the weapon and armor transmog. Whether you have multiple alts or just one character, you need to farm anima to unlock the sanctums and buy things. There are many methods of doing so, such as farming world bosses each week doing all the world quests each day for reset, farming Corthia dailies and chests each time they reset, and so on. But the problem with those is they each have lockouts where you must wait for some sort of daily or weekly reset to keep farming things that give anima. So I have a super easy, super lazy, endless, and possibly just a better way of doing so. Even if you have limited time to play, Xerath Mortis is your answer. The rares here are stuffed with anima and will drop around 6 or 7 of these anima webbing items per kill, each of which gives 35 anima. That by itself is more than most basic world quests for a fraction of the completion time. And not just that, you can continue to loot anima from rares even if you've already killed them in the same day. So it doesn't matter what rare spawns, or if you've already killed it, go tap it again for more anima. It'll add up super quick. I do highly recommend getting Xerath Mortis flying first, that way you can hover safely in the air and make it to most rares on time, as the zone is actually rather large if you're trying to scoot across it real quick. And while you can kind of do something similar in Corthia, the advantage for Xerath Mortis is because it has flying. There is no flying in Corthia, so I would say that makes this easier. And if you're worried about soloing rares now that there are no longer hordes of players farming these, since it's just not current content anymore, nearly all of these are super easy on a level 70 character with minimal gear. Of course, the better gear you have, the faster they die, so that's something to keep in mind since some of these still have a good chunk of health. That said, I said lazy in the title and in a previous statement. Now didn't I? Farming rares isn't very lazy. You can actually just drop the rares entirely and fly around the zone, collecting the treasures that spawn. While each treasure gives far less anima than a rare, they don't have to be killed in order to loot them. So I, uh, actually found it to be faster to just skip the rares and just do the treasures. Plus, skipping the rares means you won't have to wait for them to respawn, which can take a while. Like I mentioned before, this is an endless farm because these treasures will continuously respawn after a short flight around the zone. So, the trick is to pick one direction and follow them as you find them across a few different paths over the zone. Much like farming herbs or ore to make sure they respawn properly and you won't get slowed down. I also like to skip treasures that are inside caves to speed things up and, again, because I'm a bit lazy. And none of these are influenced by other players, so don't worry, no one can steal your treasures. As a side note, there is an anima buff in the form of an achievement for fully upgrading your Covenant Sanctum, which means you get more anima. 
However, I cannot tell if it officially affects Zareth Mortis or not, since there is a bit of RNG with each rare and treasure. And while my main did always get more than my alts that I tested it on, it wasn't by much, and so it's highly possible that my main was just lucky on each run. So, under the assumption that the anima buff does not affect Zareth Mortis, I'd say the best class to farm these on is a druid. There are no stirrups or any item that I'm aware of for Shadowlands that will let you interact with treasures while flying. So, druids will speed up gathering all the treasures greatly. So, here's my average results from farming just the treasures versus including the rares. With just treasures, I had an average of 6400 anima per hour. When I included the rares, that actually dropped down to about 5000 per hour. Huh, curious. These tests weren't with druids either, so it'll be even better than that if you use one. That all sounds pretty great though, right? The real advantage here is that it's easy and endless. No waiting for world quests or resets. Plus, you can do these on any level 60 plus alt, since you won't need to worry about killing rares. I recommend level 70 if you choose to include the rares. Before you officially get started, make sure to pick up the weekly quest here from Boulevard 2. Each treasure counts only as a mere 1% for that weekly quest, but trust me when I say you will be farming more than 100 treasures, so you're covered there. When you turn in this quest, you'll get even more anima for completing it, so that's why we want it. What's more, there is an anima dump NPC right here in Zareth Mortis, not far from Bulvar, for when your bags get full or when you finish for the day. You can just stop by this NPC to dump it all into your covenant and move on your merry way. Plus, I think it's the easiest one to get to in the Shadowlands over your covenants or over Corthias. In case you're worried about the fact that Anima is technically a character-specific currency and stored separately in each covenant, don't fret. There is a way to transfer it. There is a vendor by the Flight Master in Oribos who has the option to give you bind on account Anima in stacks of 1,000. This is a one-to-one -one trade, so no Anima is lost, but will also mean you can only move your Anima in these stacks of 1,000. And, since these are bind on account stacks, you can send them to any of your characters, regardless of server, or faction, or level, and it means you truly only need to farm anima on just one character. So I'd get your druid fired up if I were you. Did you know I stream on Twitch now? I do everything from transmog to leveling to gold making, and I'm live five days a week to chat with, so come hang out! And there we have it! If you think I've missed information, or you want to request I do a specific guide, let me know in the comments below. Even if I don't answer you, I just might add your idea to my list. As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte.